Arctic is a rich and dynamic environment where humans have lived for many thousands of years. As unprecedented changes sweep across the far north, scientists are working, along with Inupiaq people, to better understand the ecology of this polar sea, focusing on the smallest animals on which everything else depends. All these changes that are occurring in the Arctic, in reality, are occurring across the whole Arctic, not just Alaska. So there's a lot of studies that are going on to try and understand that because this is a whole swath of people that are being affected by these changes. The climate is warming. The ice that we normally associate with the ice cover in the Arctic Ocean is going away and it's melting. And so that means that there are longer periods in the summer without ice than there have been in the past. So that makes it more feasible to start developing oil and gas leases on the outer continental shelf. It's opening up passageways between North America and Asia, North America and Europe. So there's increased vessel traffic. You run a higher risk of oil spills or marine accidents. And then of course, there's a lot of interest in developing ports. And so those are all pretty massive changes that are pending for the Arctic. There was tremendous concern in the community about the effects of industrial activities and offshore oil and gas on, on bowheads and bearded seal, ring seal to some extent, uh, belugas, gray whales. But one of the things that the elders, I'm thinking of one in particular, Rossman Pitup, he's a great hunter, and he's been engaged in the science. He's always been very interested in that, and he's a very astute observer. He heard us for years talking about studying all the big mammals. But more and more you'd hear him say, uh, what about the bottom of the food chain, or the, the little animals? He said, I'm concerned about them. That's that's where it all starts. And it wasn't just Rossman, there were, there were others. That was part of the impetus to launch this forage fish program. The study that we're doing is looking at the food that is consumed by the animals that these people depend on. So animals like beluga whales and ring seals and bearded seals, they depend on these forage fish species that we are evaluating. Point Barrow is a really interesting place because it's where several large oceans come together. It's the Chukchi Sea and the Beaufort Sea, and the currents are really unique there too, and it's a very productive area. And we're finding nearshore areas are really important in other parts of Alaska, especially as nursery areas for juvenile fish. And we're also looking in one of the really large lagoon systems, Elson Lagoon. A lot of things happen at the bottom of the food chain here in, the, in these lagoon systems. We start with small krill, things like that, and lots of things rely on that. So everything from small other fish to whales. Young larval fish will, will grow and develop in these lagoons before they ever head out to the open ocean. Fish are consumed by seals. Seals are eaten by polar bears. These are all species that are really important to people in the North Slope. Because they're all intertwined in an ecosystem, in order to understand what's going to happen to that ecosystem, we have to study all of the elements of the ecosystem.
these fish are so tiny and they're so precious that one little fish will be sent to all sorts of different analyses. We're interested in two types of cod. So there's Arctic cod, the dominant fish in um, around Arctic waters, very important. And then they have a cousin called saffron cod, another important fish. And what we're finding is that Arctic cod are really, as their name implies, really, really like it cold. And if it's not cold, they don't, they don't do too well. They shut down and they will die uh, um, at these, these warmer temperatures. And in saffron cod, what we're finding is they're very well adapted to handle a large range of temperatures. And that's a, an important thing to know because we have two fish that live in the Arctic that are going to probably respond very differently to changing temperature. Probably the most important aspect of, of what we hope to achieve was to not only do science, but to do science in a relevant and meaningful way. Go and ask, you know, is there information that, that you need or is there, is there information that we can provide or should we think about the questions we have in a different manner using context of you know, thousands of years of knowledge? We could not do this without the North Slope Borough. They have provided a tremendous amount of logistical support for us and a tremendous amount of local knowledge that we rely on. Not only the North Slope Borough, but also the community at large. We've tried really hard to engage, particularly with the kids. The Arctic coastal system is much more complex than, than I think anyone ever realized it was and it's also much more important. So getting it right, understanding what's happening, it's really important to, to hopefully predict what could happen and to be proactive about how we manage the resource. We've learned some interesting lessons, important lessons from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and the Exxon Valdez in Prince William Sound. And we really understand how critical it is to have this information before an impact. And so the Arctic, we're trying to preempt anything negative and have an idea of how the system would have changed. If, let's, let's hope this doesn't happen, but if, you know, if there were an impact, let's say an oil spill. And there's a lot of people that live in the Arctic, and those people are dependent on that environment, and they are caught between these forces. And it's a story that's just going to grow. If the climate's going to continue to get warmer, it's, it's starting in the Arctic. And this story is just going to keep moving and spreading. The Arctic environment is rich and beautiful, but it's also extremely vulnerable in this time of rapid change. Inupiaq people and scientists are working together to share and expand their knowledge. In this way, they hope to assure that the Arctic Ocean will continue providing for people and their communities long into the future.